Uh, this video is to kick off our new unit of study, which is Imperialism and Transition. And then we will talk in depth some about Darwin's theory of evolution by natural selection. And then that'll set you up for the uh, Darwin homework question as well. So this unit of study is called Imperialism and Transition. We're going to be studying some imperialism. We're also going to be studying some kind of transitions that start to take place in the latter half of the 19th century in Western civilization. Darwin's theory of evolution is a big one in terms of um, theories and, and thoughts uh, away from um, traditional understandings. Um, and we'll study some other uh, uh, topics as well, um, such as um, transitions in terms of gender norms and ideals as well. So. Uh, that's why this unit of study is called Imperialism and Transition. You've got some transitions away from traditional norms, understandings, theories, etc. All right, now to Darwin's theory of evolution. Darwin publishes um, his work on the origin of species by means of natural selection. And oftentimes, if you were ever to run into this book today, it would just have this title here, On the Origin of Species. But the full title is instructive in terms of understanding his biological theory. This is On the Origin of Species by Means of Natural Selection, or The Preservation of Favored Races in the Struggle for Life. And this is published in 1859. When he's talking about this secondary title, you know, he says, or The Preservation of uh, Favored Races in the Struggle for Life. When he's talking about favored races, he's not talking about human skin pigmentation. That's not what he's talking about. When he's talking about different races, he's talking about different species, different subspecies of plants and animal. So just to clarify that. Now let's get into um, some of the uh, core elements then of Darwin's theory. Darwin was a British biologist and as you can see from this chart here, which is a, just kind of a diagram, kind of a, a basic diagram of his theory of evolution by natural selection, you have this main line of the species, and then you have some variety, some what we would describe in biological terms as biodiversity. The basis of this biological diversity is randomness. And I would just get some of this down over here on the side that you can refer to. When we're talking about randomness here, we're talking about random genetic mutation. Darwin's entire theory of evolution by natural selection stems from random genetic mutation. You're going to have a mainline version of the species, but his understanding of the physical world is a physical world not of permanence, but of constant change. Constant random genetic mutation creating different versions of species and different species altogether over time. So what you have here in this example is different um, coloration of the bird's plumage. But this random, uh, this random genetic mutation could take place uh, with beak shape or length, um, wings, feet, etc. you know, anything, eyes, etc. And then what you have, um, according to Darwin's theory of natural selection, is chance. And that's another thing you should write down and, and understand. So first we talked about randomness. Now the other major tenet principle of Darwin's theory of, of uh, evolution by natural selection is chance. Because each one of these birds then is going to be genetically mutated, but into chance environmental circumstances. So based on those chance environmental circumstances, some of these birds are gonna do better than others. And this is this idea of natural selection. You've got the random genetic mutation, but how well fit is the species going to be to chance environmental circumstances? So you might think about what the chance environmental circumstances might be that would um, favor birds of the darker and increasingly over time darker and darker um, plumage coloration compared to the lighter. Um, these birds might be um, living in a forest and a thickly wooded forest and the darker plumage would then allow them greater camouflage and avoidance of predators whereas the lighter plumage would have them sticking out like a sore thumb 
and an easy mark for, for predators, easy prey. And if you've flipped the chance environmental circumstances, let's say they're on a white sand beach or something like that, then this bird would likely be um, better adapted to the environment. It would blend in more with the, with the surrounding environmental circumstances. This bird would be the one standing out like a sore thumb and would be the easier mark for predation. So uh, Darwin's theory of evolution emphasizes randomness and it emphasizes chance environmental circumstances. The last major um, theme out of Darwinian biology has to do with struggle. And Darwin talks about you know, the struggle for life. And sometimes this is uh, referred to as like, and Darwin never said this, but this term survival of the fittest. And you might get that term down as well. This idea of survival of the fittest and let's elaborate on this in our notes just a little bit. The fittest is not necessarily the um, strongest species. The fittest is not necessarily the most intelligent or complex species. The fittest species is the species that's best adapted to the environment in which it happens by chance to find itself in. So that's all fitness means. How well adapted is the species to the chance environmental circumstances. And then you've got this idea of struggle. And some species are gonna be maladapted to the chance environmental circumstances and they're gonna die out rather quickly or eventually. Other species will be well adapted to the chance environmental circumstances and they will survive and reproduce. This is this idea of struggle. The conceptualization of nature that Darwin is articulating here in his biological theories is nature is simultaneously both immensely creative and immensely destructive. Nature, as Darwin sees it, is a enormously destructive and an enormously creative um, force um, regarding life and, and, and life on earth. So um, you've got this idea then of um, change, change as the nature of existence, constant unceasing change, because this, uh, now the darker plumage birds are doing better and better, but the environmental circumstances might change, in which case uh, maybe later on, lighter plumage birds would, would flourish, etc. So also this unceasing change. All right, now, with those major themes in mind, out of Darwinian biology, let's take a look at the homework question here and just talk over this for one second. And then I'll be curious to see what you say about these different themes. This is to be um, submitted in the Darwin uh, homework assignment. But Darwin's theory of evolution by natural selection continues to spark major debates, discussion, and controversies as it did upon being published in the mid-19th century. What issues and questions does Darwin's theory raise? In what ways does it challenge previously held beliefs, notions? And these beliefs, they could be religious, but also Darwinian biology, it doesn't only challenge previously held and widely held religious belief. It also challenges, in fact, previously held and widely held secular belief as well. Um, what further conclusions might uh, others uh, potentially draw from Darwinian biology? So um, consider those questions in light of what we've talked about, and I will be uh, curious to uh, see what you come up with. Thanks.